Hello guys, welcome to my top movies of the year. I just want to put a disclaimer before this video starts that this is starting from April 2021, which is when I started the channel. Um, this is the top 10 movies that I've actually reviewed on the channel and not that I've seen before. So things like Zack Schneider's Justice League probably would have been in this list. But because I watched that before the start of the channel, even though it is a 2021 movie, I wanted to say that, that just so you know, there's certain films missing from this because this is just my YouTube reviews if that makes sense uh, anyways enjoy the video hello guys welcome back to another video now we are doing my top movies of 2021 i have gone through all the films that i reviewed gave them all scores etc and then worked out the best top 10 based on those scores and when i look at the list i kind of agree with it um in terms of my my list the bottom half like from number six down to ten I gave all the same score, so I worked out which one was my favourite based on the same score, um, and then, you know, that's my, my top 10. So I'm really pleased with the list, I'm happy with how it looks, so let's get into it. Going from worst to best. So coming in at number 10 and the 10th best film of the year for me, I gave an 8 out of 10 and that was Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. For me, I thought this was a great uh, origin story and um, a good first movie for, uh, for Shang-Chi. To introduce him to the MCU, we also had great post credit scenes, we had some good sequences, the bus scene I thought was brilliant, the actual martial arts style I thought was fantastic, some of the special effects I thought were great, the only weakness to this film I felt was the plot, the fact that you know the, the, his father wanted to get let these like, animal things out, um, which was going to like kill the world and all that, and you know it didn't have to be that, but the visuals were fantastic, I think they integrated Shang-Chi into it really well, I'm excited to see him appear in other projects in the future, the dynamic between him and his best friend I thought was great, and I just think it was a really good first entry and introduction to uh, Shang-Chi into the MCU, and as I say the post credit scenes were really good as well, and you know we got, um, we got some really good stuff in it, so Shang-Chi was my 10th best film of the year. The next film I also gave an 8 out of 10 and that is, and coming in at 9th is Suicide Squad. Another superhero movie but this time in the DC Universe. 8 out of 10 I gave Suicide Squad. It's the movie directed by James Gunn starring Idris Elba, Margot Robbie and is just a really good, a kind of a follow up to the first one. But it's just a really, really good introduction to DC and um, the Suicide Squad. And I think Idris Elba did great. We had Sylvester Stallone with King Shark. The plot was just funny. The whole movie was fun. It felt a bit like Gardens of the Galaxy, which it probably should have. Um, it was fantastic. Really, really good. We don't normally get great DC movies. And i got to say, this year we really did. Suicide Squad for me is was a great film. It was I had endless fun with it. I saw it twice in the cinema. And I really, really, really enjoyed it. So that's why I've given Suicide Squad an 8 out of 10, and it's my ninth best film of the year. Coming in at number 8, and this is the highest reviewed video that I have on the channel right now, and that is No Time to Die. I also gave that an 8 out of 10, but I think it slightly edges above Shang-Chi as well as Suicide Squad. For me, this is Daniel Craig's, like, one of his best uh, movies uh, starring as James Bond, and it's also his, and unfortunately, his last. I really like him in the role, but I'm really excited to see what they're going to do next with the new James Bond. As for No Time to Die, I thought it was fantastic. Some of the stunt work was great. You know, we had the car, you know, his outfits. Everything was just, it was brilliant. It, it's not met often I buy movies on day one. And No Time to Die was one that I did a few weeks back. Really excited to watch it again. I'm going to be getting some popcorn in and watching it here. Um, I watched it two or three times in the cinema. And for me, 8 out of 10. If I was probably going to review it again, I may even score it higher. But for me, 8 out of 10, I think it's quite a fair score. I really enjoyed it. And, you know, it's my 8th best film of the year. Coming in at number 7, this is also an 8 out of 10 movie. And this is one that really surprised me. And this is Nobody. This is a great movie. It's fantastic. It's really it does feel like a john wick film it's brilliant um there was loads of hype around it it was one that i was very much just going to ignore and not review on the channel not go and see but i did go and see it i saw the hype people loved it it has a really good bus fight scene um much better than shang chi one but for me, 8 out of 10, I gave it the same score, but it was good for different things. I picked this up, uh, it actually was on a 2 for 13 HMV, so if anyone's interested and wants to buy it, I would highly recommend you do. 
it is a really, really good film, and um, I really enjoyed it. So I gave that an 8 out of 10, I think it's you know slightly better than the other ones there. Um, so the 7th place there, we've got Nobody. Coming in now at number 6, and this is my best 8 out of 10 movie, and this is Spider-Man No Way Home. One of the biggest films of the year, if not the biggest film of the year. Um, I gave it an 8 out of 10 because I felt like it was flawed in other areas. Um, I've seen it three times in the cinema in like a week. Um, and I do love it. It's my best 8 out of 10 movie. Uh, the sixth favourite film of the year. And I just really, really enjoy it. It's a nostalgia uh, movie with all the villains coming back. Obviously, we have old Doc Ock and we have Electro. We've got, um, you know, Sandman, Lizard. It's a really good film. Tom Holland comes back in the final one in the first trilogy of his movies or like his Homecoming or School Years uh, trilogy. And um, it really does does great things. The cinema experience was fantastic as well and you know No Way Home for me is the sixth best movie of the year. So now we're getting into the top five and uh, these are slightly different scores now so the next two are going to be 8.5s out of 10 and for fifth place I gave this to Free Guy. Uh, this stars Ryan Reynolds and this was an amazingly funny hilarious movie. A lot of people either rated it like really really high like eight nines out of 10s all really, really low. I was one of those really, really high ones. I loved it. I saw it twice. I went with my brother the second time because he wanted to see it and it's great. I need to pick it up. It, when I was doing this list, I was like, this is the one film that's out now that I haven't actually got. So I need to pick up Free Guy and revisit that and watch it. I could even watch it on Disney Plus, but it is a fantastic film. I loved it and I gave that an 8.5 out of 10 and therefore it's the fifth favorite film of the year. Coming in at number four and that's a pretty this is a pretty new one 8.5 out of 10 also and that is West Side Story directed by Steven Spielberg. This was an insane movie fantastically done um, one of my favorite favorite musicals um, ever made on screen and it was brilliant so so good the class quality everything was just top notch it i said in my review it felt like i was actually at the west end not at the cinema it felt like i was watching a stage production and it was just perfect i had that like immersion there like i needed to go to the toilet and i just didn't want to go you know those type of things it's just so good it was really really good and this is I'm, i've never seen anything to do with west side story i didn't know the story at all i was a first time watch and for me it was flawless a fantastic film and that is my fourth favorite film of the year coming in now to my top three and this one is a fantastic film nine out of ten i gave the next two but this one coming in at third is tick tick boom this is a netflix movie which is insane this really should have been on the big screen uh, it stars andrew garfield we also get vanessa hudgens there who uh, was in high school musical way back when and andrew garfield can do literally everything i've seen him in like hacksaw ridge silence uh we've obviously seen him in amazing spider-man one and two and tick tick boom he is phenomenal like his singing performances everything was great it's directed by lin-manuel miranda who's done music in things like uh, moana as well as in the heights and also hamilton of course his directional debut was fantastic this movie is like nominated for golden globes and stuff and i really hope it gets some oscar nods um but for me i gave this a nine out of ten it was brilliant we loved it we watched it on christmas eve and it was a great film and um, I'd highly recommend anyone checks out Tick Tick Boom. It's told in a very particular way but it's done in a very very good way and it's also clear, concise and um, very well done. So there's Tick Tick Boom. Next into second place this is also a 9 out of 10 scoring and I gave this to Encanto. The music in this movie is done again by Lin-Manuel Miranda and this was like my I love this film. I have saw this twice it was fantastic. It's now on Disney Plus. It's coming out soon. I loved it. It was just such a good feel-good film. It's an animation film done by Disney. It's up there with things like Frozen for me. I really enjoyed it. I loved it. I don't know more to say. Like it's just really good feel-good film. There's like a few good songs in there. There's like four or five songs in the whole film, and they're quite memorable. And you, you know, I'm stuck in your head. But at the moment, it's just a feel-good film. You know, you go in there, you're gonna watch a bright, colourful animated fantasy movie and you come out of there feeling a lot better and you forget about your problems and all that type of stuff so i would highly recommend encanto it's a great great film um i think it's disney's 60th movie uh which is just insane to think about but encanto for me was brilliant so i'm good the definite day one pickup encanto is for me i mean i pre-ordered the steel book and everything i'm i'm such a fan <laughs> i don't know why it's just it was a great film uh, i'm seeing a lot of people say 
good things online also about it, uh, but I'd highly recommend Encanto. Coming in then at number one, my favorite movie of the year, and I gave this a 9.5 out of 10. I didn't give any movie a 10 out of 10. This one is uh, the movie starring Will Smith, and that is King Richard. This is about Venus and Serena Williams' father, King Richard, or Richard uh, Williams, I guess his name is. And he is trying to be a role model and bring up his daughters and, you know, try and make them superstars. And the film was fantastic. It wasn't like a biopic, typical biopic movie or whatever. It was just... Um, such a family focused movie bringing everyone together it was just done very very well I thought the filmmaking was perfect it was exceptionally done I loved it I've seen other biopics this year things like Respect as well as Spencer uh, the Diana movie but this one for me was just it just felt a bit more wholesome it didn't really feel like um, like over fabricated in terms of their life at the end then you get like the credits and they show the actual shots versus the shots in the movie and stuff like that and the costumes and the you know the actual father versus Will Smith's portrayal and it was second to none and even after watching the film I've like looked online and watched stuff online and it is done very very well very respectively for me it's my film of the year and um, I gave it a 9.5 out of 10 I'm pretty sure we're gonna see that in Oscars and stuff you know the fact that the two girls played I don't know I'm not sure their names but the Venus and Serena Williams girls were like really young kids like probably 13 to like 16 maybe and I thought they did exceptional like it was flawless film it, it, I was in there for about two and a half hours but it just felt like I was in there for like an hour like it just flew by um one film I went on my own to see it was actually in the screen on my own um and one I wish I'd saw more than once to be honest with you so I've got to wait for that to come out um on streaming or something but I'm definitely going to pick that up on day one uh, but that's King Richard and I gave that a 9.5 out of 10. So there it is there is my top 10 movies I have had a fantastic year it's mad to think that those te those movies I've only started this channel in April like I haven't even had a full year um, there's all obviously been some like um, cinema movies have been really really good but you know the streaming movies have come through and I kind of think a lot of my streaming movie reviews are on the like worst movies of the year whereas the cinema movies are on the top uh, the top movies of the year. So you'd expect that, I guess. You want to see the best films in the cinema and the worst films on streaming, I guess. Uh, that's what you'd expect. But speaking of my worst films, in the next few days, I will be uploading um, a similar video to this, but it'll be my top worst movies of the year. So if you are interested in what I scored down the bottom, then please stay tuned for that. Subscribe and obviously stay tuned to watch that when it comes out. Thank you guys so much for watching, all the support, and of course, please subscribe. Let me know your thoughts if you do agree or disagree with any of my top 10 rankings, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.